having served for more than 30 years at the highest levels of the international diplomatic community, it was only to be expected that diplomacy and tact would be among the qualities that Christopher Thomas would bring to bear on his service as an independent senator. According to another independent senator, attorney at law, Dana Sitahal, senior counsel, it was these qualities that largely distinguished Christopher Thomas among his fellow senators. He would speak in measured accents, that's something from a diplomat, I think. And he would not raise his voice unnecessarily. I, I don't think I ever heard him raise it, even though he was emphasizing. And he was polite in his delivery. It doesn't mean that he was not strong in what he was saying, but polite. So I, I, and that brought a certain um, uh, uh, atmosphere to his contributions, which I think is something to admire. Christopher Thomas was appointed an independent senator in 2000. He continued to serve up to 2003, when he left the Senate to take up a United Nations position in Geneva as a member of the UN's Joint Inspection Unit. This is the body charged with overseeing the way the UN spends its money throughout its various international organizations. He says when he informed the president of his intention to resign from the Senate, it was the president's view that there were other areas where his services may be needed. Whatever the area, he agreed to consider it. And having spent just about six months in Geneva, I felt the need to come back to Trinidad and make a contribution locally. I have spent upwards of 30 years internationally and I felt, well, it was time to bring home some of those experiences and serve locally. So I came back and I uh, took up the question of the, the position of the chairmanship of the Public and Police Service Commissions. I started that in 2004. It's a three-year assignment and I was um, reappointed in 2007. So I'm in my second tenure as Chairman of the Public Service Commission and the Police Service Commission. Concerning his three-year stint in the Senate, Ambassador Thomas says it was very insightful and quite new to him since it involved a significant change in his career. It was challenging in the sense that you were making policy, you were assisting in legislation, and so it was a new dimension of my experiences and what I consider to be my contribution. But over those three years, he observed a peculiar development among the independent benches, stemming, he says, perhaps circumstantially, from the nature of the politics in Parliament at that time. He says although independent senators do not consult with each other and do not necessarily form a common view, they were actually assuming a medium ground between opposition and government. And in some cases, we were actually, without realizing it, behaving like an opposition, when the, the opposition itself had refused to participate. So that in fact, in getting to decisions, it was largely the view of the independent senators that formed changes and amendments to the legislation that was proposed. He says he could recall two such occasions, one in relation to the introduction of an aviation bill and the other in respect of constitutional reform. The aviation bill was introduced by the then Minister of Works and Transport, Jolene John, and Ambassador Thomas says he did not like too much how it was framed. I thought it smacked too much of a foreign importation of a bill without really adjusting it to the local conditions and local requirements. And on that occasion, I spoke first, I believe, as an independent senator and I outlined everything that was wrong with it, that it certainly did not address the local situation. And um, she got up after and said that the government had decided to withdraw the bill. And the bill was withdrawn for further adjustments and for further reading. At the, the, at the 
lunch and interval, and I said to her, the afternoon was the recess, I said to her, well, why did you withdraw the bill that quickly? She says, because what you were saying made sense. And in fact, I was only given this bill to read this morning. If I can, I didn't, I had nothing to do with the input in the bill. This is what I was given to read and I was reading the bill. And as you spoke, I realized that you were saying so many things that could have been introduced into the bill to change it. And so we are going to do that. And they brought back a changed bill. On the question of constitutional reform, Ambassador Thomas recalls that in his contribution in the Senate, he emphasized the question of the maturity that was necessary. I made the point that it is not only reform that is needed. In fact, even without reform, if we had a certain greater maturity in the way we worked in Parliament and in the Senate, then we will find that things would work better for the country. He says he cited one example relating to the no vote campaign by the opposition in the 1971 general elections. The ruling PNM government, led by the late Prime Minister Dr. Eric Williams, won all 36 seats in Parliament, resulting in what was not so much a crisis as an unprecedented situation. Ambassador Thomas was then a young diplomat in Caracas and the government directed its various missions to consult with persons abroad and communicate to the government what they felt should happen in this unprecedented situation. And I did my consultation and when I went to the, the British Embassy, my counterpart says to me, Chris, this will never happen in the United Kingdom. Because in the United Kingdom, our opposition is regarded as Her Majesty's loyal opposition. They consider that they have a role to play at all times. Uh, and therefore, they will always vote, they will always participate. What you have done is you have inherited a constitution without a culture. And that was the main important point. Unless you can, unless you can mature that culture to the point where people understand that whether opposition or government they have a role to perform in the construct of governance. They have a role to perform. Senator Sita Hull recalls that she sat next to the then Senator Thomas in the upper house and she describes his contributions as having been thoughtful and useful. He, he had an independent mind, an independent thinking, but he wasn't um, confrontational about it. But when it was necessary, he could be rather assertive of his position and I think I noticed that in a budget debate when he was making a contribution on um, some matters involving taxation and businesses and, and he felt that the government was not dealing or confronting the issues properly so he became rather um, assertive about it. He also was um, one to decide whether he should make a contribution if he thought it was worthwhile. He wouldn't just make a contribution just for saying something. If he had something to say and it, he thought it would bring, um, you know, some kind, some degree of, of um, you know, enlightenment. So I thought, in short, then that he, he had useful contributions, and he also had a nice, um, elegant manner of dealing with things, which added to the Senate. Christopher Thomas obtained his primary education at St. Agnes Easy School from 1942 to 1949 and at the Tranquility Boys Intermediate School from 1950 to 1953. An old boy of both Fatima and St. Mary's Colleges, he has been inducted into the Halls of Fame of the two institutions. He's a holder of a BA in General Studies from the University of London, 1961. The Diploma in Education from the University of the West Indies, 1963. The Master of Literature from the University of Bristol, 1970. And the MA in International Politics from the New York University, 1977. He also holds the Doctor of Laws degree from the University of Maine, 2003 and is also trained in modern languages. During his long and distinguished career in the public service, 
Ambassador Thomas has served as a graduate teacher and university lecturer. He was permanent secretary in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs from 1983 to 1985. Trinidad and Tobago Ambassador to Venezuela from 1985 to 1990 and was subsequently elected as Assistant Secretary General of the Organization of American States for two consecutive terms, 1990 to 2000. He held the office of Chair of the UN Finance Committee in 1975 and served as Senior Member of the Administration and Budgeting Committee of the UN for 14 years, 1976 to 1990. He also served as a UN Inspector from 2003 to 2004. Although he is no longer part of the diplomatic community, so significant were his achievements as a diplomat that Christopher Thomas is still recognized and addressed as Ambassador Thomas. Among those diplomatic achievements was his role in determining that Trinidad and Tobago should adopt a policy recommending China's admission to the United Nations in 1971. He recalls that the government of the day was canvassing the views of its missions abroad about what position it should take at the UN on the China question. At the Trinidad and Tobago Embassy in Caracas, the ambassador was absent and responsibility fell to the young diplomat Thomas to do the necessary research and come up with the paper which he submitted to the government. And I was called up about uh, two weeks after by the permanent secretary at the time and said, I have some news for you. And I said, what is that? He says, your paper on the China question is the one that the government has decided to be guided by and they have sent that to New York as the policy that New York should take on the China question. I recommended that China should be admitted to the United Nations. So we voted yes on that occasion. As Assistant Secretary General of the OAS and later as a member of a group of ex-senators, Ambassador Thomas has visited Haiti on several occasions seeking to resolve the difficult political, social and economic issues facing that impoverished CARICOM country. Ambassador Thomas was awarded the Chaconia Medal Gold in 1994 and the Gran Cordon del Libertado of Venezuela in 1990. He was also granted the first ever award for distinction and diplomatic representation by the Caribbean Studies Association in Washington in 1999. In addition to his renewed appointments as chairman of both the Police Service Commission and the Public Service Commission, he was appointed member of the Regional Judicial and Legal Services Commission in August 2004. Ambassador Thomas is married with three children, all of whom live abroad. His hobbies include golf, reading, and writing. And this is how Senator Sita Hall sums up her description of the man whom she said brought some charm to the Senate. He, I thought he was always a consummate gentleman. 